A pen? I don't need no pen. I need an airbrush. Hi, I'm Santino Faris. I am the uh, paint shop supervisor here at Immortal Masks, and I'm going to show you how to paint the reanimators. Ooh, let's get started, shall we? We're going to make some colors. The first color we're going to make is blue-brown. That's going to be our base contour color. So we start with a little bit of blue mixed in, and then we'll come in with a little bit of brown. And that brown is going to mute the blue and make a nice, soft blue-gray. And this creates a solution that we'll actually be able to put through our airbrush and spray onto the mask. There we go. This is our new reanimated mask. Fun tidbit, this is actually my first mask that I sculpted for the company. So we're about to establish the paint job on it. It started with a watercolor that I presented. The overall sculpture changed a little bit from there, but that was kind of the jumping off point. I also brought this other Frankenstein head in that I made, and uh, we're gonna use that as a paint reference as well. And we'll go in with contour now. Create some shadow. Now we'll come back in with a little bit of red-brown. Mutes it out, makes it a little more natural. Oftentimes, silicone painters will go really heavy all at once. You want to make sure that you're servicing the fact that it's silicone and that you can get translucency through it. Kind of using the blue to be part of the, the rotten sections of the flesh. We'll go back over with some yellows and some purples, and those blues will start to kind of brown out and become sort of rotten. Years ago, I believe it was by Tim Gore, and one of the lessons that he taught me was, as a painter, your job is to create intrigue on every plane of the mask, or prosthetic, or whatever it is, because no matter where you look at it, there's going to be something interesting to pull your eye. If it's their vein pattern, if it's a pattern, or a burn, or a scar, just from every angle turn the mask and look at it and find something interesting that you want to pull off of. So the next color we're going to do is yellow and we're going to just pop some of the highlights and uh, some of the musculature. Whenever we throw yellow over the red and the purple it kind of mutes out into this rottenly fleshy, a little grungier, a little more decayed. I'm going to come back in with the red brown again. Now we do standardize our paint jobs here at Immortal. Everyone can replicate the exact same paint jobs, but you'll notice that everyone kind of puts their own little flair, their own little touch and personality and style into the way that they go about it. And that's what makes every piece unique. First things first, I'm gonna take this blue-brown that we started with. I'm gonna pour a little into a cup and add just a touch more brown to it. This thins down the paint, makes the paint actually spread out and soften into a really nice, realistic skin tone. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! 